very much, Ash. Can, you, can everybody hear me? We can hear you good, friend. You can hear me different. No, I can hear you good. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <th> <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> you go. Thanks the stage is yours. Yeah. Thanks for the introduction. So, uh, yeah. So, here at Avia Industries, we are dedicated to the empowerment of every sentient being to making interstellar travel accessible to each and every individual so as to help us experience true personal freedom and gain control of our own destiny. So this is the mission statement that was uh, defined by our two fictional co-founders who met a few years after the war and who launched Avia as one of the first interfaction ship manufacturers. We have an extensive background story, roughly 3,500 words, that can be found on our website. And if you love that kind of stuff, then please go and visit it. But who are we outside of the, uh, the metaverse? So Avia Industries was founded 11 months ago by Prometheus and myself, July 18th, 2021. This guy is so good. The, thank you. Which makes us one of the oldest guilds around. Um, at this moment, our Discord is nearly 4,000 members, of which close to 1,800 sign up actively to become a member of our guild. And to summarize our goal in one sentence, we are looking to become the most profitable shipbuilder in the metaverse. We strive, oh, yeah, sorry, and our, our slogan is uh, build, own, earn. So we strive to co achieve complete vertical integration, bringing our supply chain fully in-house. This requires many disciplines as we manufacture, ship, protect, research, and trade, which means everyone can join us from miners, freighters, explorers, and even bounty hunters. We pioneered the three-faction approach, which means we are setting up shop in all three factions, uh, which gives us access to all resources, allows us to cater to all three markets, and to welcome players no matter which faction they fancy. What are our values then? We believe in the freedom and independence of our members. Our strong network of freelancers will be more successful than the top-down hierarchies we see around us everywhere. We are committed to sharing knowledge with the Stratus community. We are open to everybody, no matter your gender, wallet size, ethnicity, or sexual orientation. We also believe we have a wider responsibility that goes beyond providing scholarships to those with less financial means. Though we operate in the metaverse, we care about our own planet as well. And that is why we pledge to donate 1% of our annual profit to an environmental charity. But let's look at how we are growing Avia. In order to grow, we need to attract members and make sure they stay. Looking at the attract them part first, um, we have actually so far not been actively recruiting, but by giving back to the community and being helpful, many have found their way to us. Um, and we started with this as soon as we opened our doors. Uh, in the past, we launched the Star Atlas Community Wiki. Uh, we organized the first ever story writing competition in partnership with Grape. And we were the first to launch a real time ship price comparison page. Besides these momentous events, we are constantly sharing knowledge uh, in the form of news articles, guides, weekly newsletter, ship analysis, and videos. But we are going to up the bar in the future. We are going to be publishing more tools and we'll increase our focus on educating the community. And we're also diligently working to launch an NFT project of our own later this year, spreading knowledge of the Atlas to the wider crypto community. And last but not least, we are currently developing a community game that we hope will, peel, will, that we hope will be appealing to gamers worldwide. So let's switch gears. How do we plan to keep everybody around after they decided to join us? For a large part, this is really all about nurturing our community. And we are doing that by hosting two hour in-depth meetings weekly, where we discuss the, the latest Star Atlas updates. Additionally, we are hosting regular competitions and we have a widely recognized homegrown NFT alpha gathering team on our server, providing the latest intel to our community. In all honesty though, it is really our community itself that makes everybody feel at home. But of course, we're stepping up the game here as well. We are planning to introduce our tokens uh, IDO, preferably when the blood stops flowing. Uh, we are taking steps to set up and launch our DAO on chain in order to give more structure to our democratic proce processes. And we are going to launch member profiles, which are web pages where our members can see what they are contributing to AFIA in game combining the function of leaderboard, achievement overview, and social network into one. So with this introduction out of the way, let's finally dive into what truly makes us unique. 
what sets it apart? Is it our community? Absolutely. Is it our scholarships? Perhaps. But let's briefly talk about the role of scholarships within AVIA. So scholarships, and I'm just using the term broadly as it's the most popular term used everywhere, but just about renting assets. So we have members who want to rent out their assets and we're going to help them with that by providing tools to connect potential scholars to them. We as a guild are also renting out our own treasury owned ships, complementing our members offer. It's important to realize that we are not restricting our members in any way. We are not managing all scholarships. We are simply working next to them to extend our offer. The goal here is to onboard as many people interested as, at us as possible, focusing on those who are lacking the financial means to play at all or how they want. So we have an awesome community and we have plans for scholarships. Now, of course, this model can be applied basically to any crypto game. There's nothing in here that is really specific to Stratlas. And the team is creating an awesome game, yet most guilds seem content to stop here. So where is the game specific stuff? Let's reward gameplay that benefits AVIA as a whole. So to that end, we are designing our tokenomics for our upcoming token to tightly wrap the economic model of Star Atlas. We are basically extending their economy with ours. And not just that, we are essentially building another gamified layer on top of their game as well. In short, uh, or to keep things short really, and give a sneak peek of what is to come, let's zoom in on how the crafting of ships specifically works within our guild. There will be a mission board, or really a com mission board, where uh, all, for all three factions, regular ship orders will be placed automatically by combining on-chain analysis, historical trends, uh, location information, and a lot more, um, with the, um, the, um, the prices of the raw resources that go into the creation of a ship. That will actually introduce ships on the mission board, and our members will then be able to claim a certain step in the process, depending on the facilities they own, their location, and availability. So once they have done their part, they uh, deliver the goods to our treasury, get rewarded with a market conform amount of Atlas, and additionally, a bonus in our own token AEP. When the ship has been completed, the guild treasury sells the ship uh, if ordered or still lucrative, or in case our window of opportunity has closed, the ship will simply be added to our rental pool and most likely be assigned to a scholar. Talking about scholars, managers will be able to define their preferred split of AEP tokens on their profile page. Uh, whenever AEP tokens will flow to a scholar, we will automatically split this and reward both manager and scholar using the set ratio. Um, that's already it. Thank you very much for listening. And if there are any questions, let's hear them. That was awesome, or fun cracker. You know, and I do just want to comment, you guys do an incredible job over AFIA, keeping the community updated with your newsletters. And I know that you have awesome content creators underneath your roof as well. So I do just want to give a huge shout out to all of all of the work you're putting in there and doing there. And I got to say, I'm really loving your new logo. Ah, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, in order to, of course, represent that inclus uh, inclusivity aspect a bit better. We figured we'd do, uh, yeah, adopt the pride that's going on in the month of June and uh, update the logo uh, to represent that. Thanks. <laughs> I think it's perfect. I love what you guys did there. Um, always great things coming out of AFIA. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and go over to the judges. I'm sure they have an incredible question put together for yeah. you. Judges, you're yeah. on the floor. Yes, thank you for the presentation. Uh, we are big fans of manufacturing as a Busan. Oni, we are uh, wanting to know about your possible revenue pro projections for your project, as you've described, if you've gone that far. And then also maybe the benefits to the Star Atlas community as a whole and other guilds, if possible. And then I have a follow-up question after that. Yeah, sure thing. So uh, revenue projections are, of course, if you're yeah, super tightly related to the uh, Star Atlas game and the release schedule. So we have no projections as of this moment. Um, as of what we are uh, able to offer to the other guilds, I missed your second question, but I'll come back to that in a sec. 
um, mutual things. Again, we are always sharing knowledge. We are we are sharing guides, newsletters, the latest updates on status with everybody, the wider community. Uh, we our, our NFT project and upcoming uh, a game, of course, will be hopefully uh, enjoyed by everybody. But the guilds themselves, they're able to uh, secure uh, their ships directly from us, uh, be it in game or outside of the game, uh, and we can make. Um, Interesting deals, I think, that will be lucrative to both, uh, to uh, yeah, to really uh, up their game as well. So, uh, being uh, in all three factions, our market is everywhere. We can uh, cater to everybody. So, um, uh, just contact us, and, and we'll make it happen. Sorry, and your second question in between. My, I my of... yeah, my my final question is: okay. I know you've probably never flown through the high risk zone of the middle part. And if you do, you will wonder about the risk of putting rentals into that area. Have you thought about how you will mitigate those risks? That's a very good question. Um, yes and no, uh, in the sense that we know that there's a rental possibility within Solana already. Uh, we are ourselves not at the moment developing a better system to also protect your ships in the high-risk zone. So um, either that will require um, a collateral in order to somehow set that off, risk-based, uh, either or it might require uh, uh, members to first prove themselves. But hopefully, we're still hopeful that somebody will actually uh, jump on board and actually create that aspect of the, of the rental model. It's not something that we have. Uh, we are developing ourselves at this point in time. If nobody does, then of course, at some point, we will have to look at that, doing it ourselves. But at this point in time, we're just too busy with actually, uh, yeah, making all the other tools and uh, information available. Thank you. Well, welcome.